Sky Country Journal, Bringing Montana to Montanans, presents Montana's 64th Legislature. Senator Jennifer Fielder sat down with me today and shared her thoughts on some upcoming legislation. Well, the last thing in the world that we should be trying to do is put more people on welfare, especially able-bodied people. What we really need to be doing is investing in independence and providing opportunities so that these people can have good paying jobs, they can have their freedoms, and they can be self-reliant. If we work on those things, then we're going to be able to pro prosper as a society and as individuals. But if we put all of our effort into just expanding welfare programs, we're going to be trapping people in poverty for their lives. I've heard some arguments about um, what age uh, young people should um, be allowed to choose their path in life. And I believe right now they have to go to have some education through age 16. But after that, it's up to them to choose what they w would like to do. And I, I, I think that's probably a good idea to allow that choice. People need to realize that they're going to pay the consequences for their choices. Education is really important, but a public school isn't the only place where you can get a good education. There's a really good education that can be found on on-the-job on training and through different experiences. I have a, uh, a friend, an old gentleman, who uh, left school at the age of 16, and he went out into the woods and, and started providing for himself through hunting and trapping. And uh, he's quite an amazing person. He's now a millionaire. Um, he made his first million decades ago. So um, he figured out that uh, there was a way to go out and, and make something of himself. And sitting in a classroom being lectured at wasn't a way that worked well for mm -hmm. him. He forwarded me a recommendation for a Fourth Amendment Protection Act bill several months ago. And recognizing that the, uh, the government and uh, private industry are data mining on every single person constantly. I mean, there's, there's probably nothing they don't know about our communications, uh, whether it be our, our mail or our, our email or our telephone calls. That's all being tracked right now. And, you know, the Fourth Amendment is very specific that um, you need to have reasonable cause of, of a crime or suspicion of a crime and it has to be done by a, a warrant from a judge, a court-issued warrant, um, if you're going to, to try to collect somebody's personal effects. And you have to name specifically what personal effect or property that, that, you're, that the law enforcement is, is going after and, and, and seizing. So I don't think we're seeing the Fourth Amendment followed at all right now in this regard. Um, and I just, I'm looking for ways to ensure that our public servants realize that um, protecting the citizens' rights are uh, top of the list for us. That is uh, why we are required to take an oath to the United States Constitution as well as the Constitution of the state of Montana. Uh, it's not just the privacy issues, it's all uh, people's rights. The, the government is here to serve the people and protect their rights. And I think we've gone away from that. We've gone to a government now that uh, in, in many cases just um, finds ways to grow itself so that it provides job security to those that are in it and, and, and um, I guess some ladder climbing for those that are in it. You know, there's a lot of good folks in government, but I think we've lost our way as far as following the United States Constitution and the state of Montana Constitution. And if we follow those documents, we're going to be a lot better off. People will know that they're being protected and that they're safe um, as far as government's roles goes, and it's up to them um, to, to take care of the rest of their life. So as far as the transfer of public lands, um, that idea is catching on like wildfire all over the country. We have numerous states in the east and the west that are working to support those efforts to transfer certain public lands to the state so that we can have better access, better health, and better productivity on those public lands. We're not talking about w wilderness or national parks. We're just looking at the, the general use lands, multiple use lands of uh, Forest Service and BLM. We're also not requesting transfer of wilderness. I said wilderness area, didn't I? So, um, and we're not talking about Indian reservations or military installations, just the lands that were supposed to be set aside for multiple use, sustained yield with local planning under the 1976 Federal Land Management Policy Act. All those promises have been broken and gone by the wayside, and we've worked very hard. Many people have worked very hard for a long time to uh, get Congress to honor those promises, as well as the executive branch, and they just don't seem capable of doing it or interested in really doing that for the Western states. So, um, Working on improving the access, health, and productivity on our lands is 
a very high priority for me, not just through the transfer, but through other things that we can do in the short run as well. I've got a whole package of, of bills and other legislators are working on bills to help um, counties be able to get some action on these lands to reduce fire hazard, to uh, get people back to work, and um, to have a stronger voice at the local level in the decisions that affect those communities. So we're working on a number of things. It's going to be an exciting session, I think. Watch more reports from Sky Country Journal online. I'll see you out there.